Hello everybody, I'd like to welcome you to the Yee Framework a Developer's Tutorial. This is part three, creating your first Yee application, and my name is Matt Klitgard, and I'll be your host. So let's get started with a little overview on what we're going to talk about. First, we're going to walk you through the steps of creating a new Yi application, the initial setups involved in creating that application. Then we're going to talk about the application lifecycle, because it's important for every developer no to know how any code is rendered to the screen. Then we're going to briefly discuss controllers, models, and views. And then another application within Yi called Gi. We're also going to talk about how to create friendlier URLs because when you, f as you see later on, the ones generated by Yi automatically are not very pretty or user friendly. We're going to talk about database connections and finally how to put that data on the screen. So at this point, I'm going to assume that uh, James has already walked you through setting up your IDE, your web server stack, your web host, uh, the JDK source control, your IDE to source control solution, and the Yee framework. Uh, if you haven't done this, you should probably go back and watch the first and second parts of this tutorial as they will be used in this tutorial. Okay, so creating your first Yi application. Okay, so what are we going to need to do first to create a new Yi application? Well, first we're going to use a program that's built into Yi, and it's called Yik, and it's a web application generator. Um, the first thing you're going to want to identify is what your application name is going to be. Um, the bizarre plugin for Eclipse requires that the project be in all lowercase, so we're going to make sure that that application name is in lowercase to remain consistent across your IDE, Bazaar, and Yi. So let's go ahead and uh, open up a command prompt and uh, I'll walk you through the steps of uh, creating your first application. Okay, so I already have a command prompt open here, and the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and navigate to wherever you installed Yi. Um, in this case, we installed under C, SAMP, HTDocs, Yi main. You're going to want to navigate one folder deeper into the, f into the framework folder here. Um, and in this folder is where Yi has Yik. Yik is the application generator for Yi. It'll create a shell application for you which contain all the necessary components to create a Yi application. So the first thing you're going to want to type is Yik. Then you're going to want to type web app to tell it to create a web app. And you're going to want to specify the directory. And in this case we're going to go back to directories because we want to put it in the htdocs folder. And then we're going to go ahead and call this a ye test. And you're going to want to just push enter. And it's going to ask you if you really want to create it under this. And you just are going to type in yes. And there you go. Your application shell should have been generated in the CZAMP htdocs a ye test folder. So you might be asking yourself at this point, uh, what exactly did Yik create? Uh, well, let's go ahead and take a brief look. Okay, so if we go into our AE test folder, you're going to notice that it put in several folders and many files. Um, folders like your images, CSS files, your themes, your uh, entry point into the application, which is this index.php file, and your protected folder. Now, let's go ahead and drill into this. And in your protected folder, you're going to notice that this is where all of the main important uh, files for Yi and your PHP application will reside. You'll notice that your controllers, your models, and your views will also be run through this folder. Now the Yik program does create a uh, general application for you, but it does leave out one important thing that we're going to need to have um, for our source control, and that's the actual Yi framework. So we're going to need to go ahead and copy that entire framework folder into the application. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and navigate back to your Yi main, and go ahead and right click on framework. We're going to copy it, and we are going to paste it in our AE test folder. 
Now the reason we're going to do this is because when we upload it to source control, source control doesn't won't know and doesn't have the E framework. So when this index file goes to look for where the E framework resides, it will not find it and you will not be able to load your application. Um, putting it inside of this folder will uh, allow the index to find the framework and allow you to run your web application. Okay, so now that we've had Yik create our first uh, web application shell, what are we going to need to do next? Well, the first thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and create a project in Eclipse so we can modify any of the files. So let's go ahead and uh, open Eclipse now. I already have it open here. And we're going to go ahead and go to File, New, PHP Project. And in this, we're going to call it the same thing that we called a project in Yik, which is A, E, test. Now, Eclipse gives you two options. One is to create a new project in a workspace, and the other is to create a project at an existing location. Uh, this is the one we're going to use because our source, which is the framework, already exists. So we're going to go ahead and navigate to where we created our web application here, which is in XAMPP, htdocs, AE test, and you're going to go ahead and click OK and finish and Eclipse should create the project files needed and should load up everything that uh, Yik created so you'll see our index is here our protected folder is also here with our controllers models and views and also the Yee, the entire Yee framework is also here in the project Okay, so one more thing we're going to want to do before we leave Eclipse is that we need to make a modification to one of the files. And that file is the index.php file. Now this is the file that when loaded in the web browser will point to where the actual Yi framework is. Now our cloud control or source control and deployment environments don't natively have the Yi framework. So that is why we actually copied it into our application folder. So what we also need to do is change the Yi variable. Now Yik automatically puts the variable name as wherever the Yi uh, framework lies. But in our case, we have changed it. So what we need to do to get this to work is go ahead and highlight this line here and delete it. So now what we're doing is we're setting our, telling our uh, ye variable that the directory name now is under framework ye PHP, which is this folder here, and the ye.php file, it will be in here. So when the web browser goes to load and loads this variable here, it will know natively where the framework exists. So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and save that, and we are done with Eclipse for now. Okay, so the next portion of this, uh, setting up our new ye application, is to uh, create our application space um, on our deployment server and our configuration management server and for this we are using cloud control um, in previous uh, videos uh, we showed you how to create your uh, account and create your SSH key and how to log in and some basic usages of cloud control and now we're going to go ahead and show you how to actually create your application and then push all of the files into this application into cloud control and then actually browse to your uh, to your website so let's go ahead and do that so let's uh, open a command prompt here and go ahead and navigate to the application that you created earlier which is under XAMPP htdocs and AE test. Now I just want to point out that um, I did change the name here because um, for some reason uh, I had some problems with my microphone and I ruined the uh, bizarre branch of our original AE test in cloud control and I there's really no way around that so, and the best way to get around that is to actually create a brand new application so that's what I did essentially in the same steps I just used AE test Two instead of AE test. So we'll go ahead and keep moving forward with AE test two. 
So the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and type in CC TRL app, which is an application that you installed earlier for cloud control. And this application is going to help us create our AE test 2 application in the cloud or on their servers. So you're going to type in your application name here and then create PHP. This is going to tell the uh, cloud control servers to create a PHP application with this name here. So we're going to go ahead and push enter. And at this point you may be asked to log in and if you are go ahead and enter in your login credentials. If not then you should it should just come up with a blank line which will usually signify that it created it but just in case let's go ahead and take a look uh, type in cctrl app again and dash l which means list push enter and you should get a list of all of the php applications under your account uh, in cloud control and you're going to notice here is ours right here ae test 2 so the next step and final step in getting all of our configuration management, uh, cloud control, and web deployment uh, applications set up is to actually put our, our source code under source control and push all of that into our cloud control repository and deploy that application so we can browse and test it. Um, to do this we're going to use an intermediator tool called Bazaar. Um, we did install a plugin um, for Eclipse that will allow you to do essentially the same steps I'm going to show you except that I had some issues with it where when I was adding and trying to commit files uh, initially it wasn't creating the branch and it wasn't actually uh, uploading to the correct directory and eventually it was giving me permission to deny it errors and so we're gonna go ahead and just use the command line prompt which is pretty easy to do with a simple a few simple commands you can uh, put all of your source code under source control and push it all to cloud control so let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that the first thing you're going to want to go ahead and do is uh, load a command prompt. I already have one up from when we created the uh, application in Cloud Control. And you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that you are in the application folder. Um, when you, you run the bizarre commands, any bizarre command, um, you want to make sure that the you are going to be running it in that application folder so that it can access the repository and correctly set up the repository. So you notice we are in AE test 2 and we're going to type in BZR which is the bizarre executable and we're going to type in init which is basically going to tell bizarre to create an initial branch in source control in for that folder so we're going to push enter and you're going to notice it created the tree it's there's nothing in the tree now it's just a folder was created uh, in this folder here which sets up your um, source control project. So the next thing we want to do is type in bzr add and this will be a recursive add that will go through every folder and every file and add those files to the tree. So if you want to go ahead and push enter and it should go through and add every single file to the tree and you're going to notice it even went through the framework folder and added all of the ye uh, source into your tree. So the next thing we're going to want to do is to commit these changes. Uh, committing these changes is essentially checking in the changes and uh, making your repository complete uh, for its first official uh, revision. So to do that you're going to want to type in bzr. You want to type in commit dash m and we're going to type in initial and basically what we're doing here is we're committing all of our changes which are here to the tree because these are the changes we made to the tree dash m specifies a message now it's not going to tell you this but you it will require a message every single time otherwise you will get an error when trying to commit any changes so we're going to type in initial and we're going to push enter and it should proceed in checking in all the changes and committing all of them and giving you your first revision which is here committed revision number one and that ends uh, the bizarre initial uh, configuration management and source control 
tutorial. So next what we're going to do is figure out how to push all of these changes into cloud control.